In question two, we're asked to solve by factoring. Okay, so I want you to, for 2a, we'll do our notes on how to solve by factoring. So if you want to keep this by you at all times, okay? Solve by factoring, the first step is get zero on one side, usually the right hand side, okay? So we don't have to do that in part A, but we'll have to do that in part B. Step two is factor, factorize the whatever you have. Factorize whatever you have if it's a difference of squares or a, or a pull out a common factor or whatever. And step three is um, is let's see. I guess I'll I'll go over step three, and I just want you to think about this. Um, if you had 3 times a equal to 0, just tell me without solving that what a has to... Whoops, 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 sorry again. If you had 4 times b equal to 0, tell me what b has to be. If you had this, 4 times b equals 0, what's b? b has to be 0, right? If you had a multiplied by uh, 5 equals 0, tell me what a has to be. A is some number. Some number times 5 gives 0. What's A? A has to be 0, right? So now that you're warmed up, I want you to answer this question. If you had two numbers, A times B, equal to 0, what can you tell me about the two numbers A and B? So take a minute and think about this. How would you explain? If two numbers, and you don't know either of them, but all you know is that they multiply to give 0 a times b gives 0. If you have that situation, what can you say about the numbers a and b? And think of a sentence to explain that. Um, can you say that, do they both have to be 0 at the same time? Do they both have to be 0 at the same time? Do, do you have to have 0 times 0 to get 0? No, right? You don't, they, they both don't have to be zero. Does one of them have to be zero? Is that true? Right, so either A is zero and B can be anything, or, or the B is zero and A can be anything it wants to be, right? So to me, if, if you have two numbers multiplied that give zero, one of them has to be zero, doesn't it? So if a times b is 0, do you agree with me then that then either a is 0 or b is 0, right? Do you agree with that? If a times b equals 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0, right? So that is the rule we're going to use, the zero product rule, or, or the, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So that's the last step. After we factorize, we're going to say, well, if a times b, because we'll have things in parentheses being multiplied by each other, if a times b is 0, then we can say that either the a is 0 or b, the other factor is 0. One of the factors, we make them both equal to 0 and then we'll get to solve these equations. But there are the three steps, I'll refer to them as we go through uh, through, through question 2. So x squared mi plus 2x minus 24 is Again, a short method, isn't it? Because we just have an x squared uh, term, and we have a, an x term and a number. So we list the pairs of factors at 24. 1 times 24. 2 times what? 2 times 12. 3 times what? 3 times 8. 4 times what? 4 times what gives 24? 4 times 6. 5 doesn't go in there. 6 does. 6 times 4, but we're back to where we started. So there's the pairs of factors at 12 of 24, I mean. What two numbers multiply to negative 24? You need two numbers to multiply to negative 24, but then they add to positive 2. Can you think of two numbers that will multiply to give negative 24, but they will add to positive 2? Well, you might look to work with the 6 and the 4 here, right? <coughs> because there's a difference of 2 there, right? Now, 
if you had a positive 6 and a negative 4, they would add to positive 2. And if you multiply them, what do you get? 6 times negative 4? That's negative 24, right? So they work. Watch out, because negative 6 and positive 4, they add to negative 2, don't they? Not positive 2. We need a positive 2. Okay? So negative 6 and positive 4 won't work. Okay? But we're not done. 6 and negative 4 are not the answers. What we get is x plus 6 times x minus 4 equals 0. And what we have done is we've done the second step, which is factorize. And now we can do the third step. If a times b is 0, then one of these factors has to be 0, right? But instead of a and b this time, we have two factors. We have an x plus 6 times an x minus 4. But these are just two things being multiplied. So we can say either this guy equals 0, or this other guy equals 0. One of these things, if these multiply to give 0, one of them has to be 0. Or in your head you could think, look, if I plug a negative 6 in here, look, negative 6 plus 6 gives me 0, and 0 times that is 0, right? Or, if I plug the positive 4 in here, what's 4 minus 4? See, 4 minus 4 is 0, and then this 0 times this is going to be 0. So you can see the answers are actually definitely negative 6 or 4. But you could also, like, the procedure is to write it out like this and solve the equations, because they're not always going to be that obvious, right? So we subtract 6 from both sides, we get x equals negative 6, or add 4 to both sides and x equals 4, right? And that is the answer, right? You can also check these. But the trick is, the trick is to go the extra step and not to say, like most students want to say the answer is 6 and negative 4. That's completely wrong. If you did that in the test, you'd lose a whole bunch of points, okay? It's not 6 and negative 4. It's negative 6 and positive 4. So you got to go through the steps. you got to step 1, get 0 on one side. Step 2, factorize. Step 3, if a times b is 0, then write this equals 0 or this equals 0. Solve each equation, and then you have your answer for sure, right?